What's up, everyone? Freedom of Nazanin from Holistic Songwriting. Welcome back to the Songwriting Corner, uh, where we just talk about things that are generally interesting to songwriters like you. Today's video is about overthinking chords. This is part two. If you haven't seen part one yet, please find that on my channel and watch that first. This is a course that you need to watch in order. So this is part two of three. Again, talking about why I think too many artists out there are really busying themselves with thinking about harmony when really it's kind of a simple process to go through for most songs. Before we get to that though, if you want the simplest solution for writing chord progressions, there is a plugin called Captain Chords that helps you pick the chords you want in the correct key. It'll help you come up with interesting rhythms and it'll even take care of the voice leading for you. When you've got something you like, just drag it on a MIDI track and you're done. There's a sponsor for this video, so if this sounds good to you, check out the link in the description and use the coupon HOLISTIC to get a 10% discount. Anyways, back to the video. So, last week we talked about using only one or two chords per bar. This time we're going to talk about using four chords in total, okay? So really what we want is to create a two or four bar section. Two bars if we have two chords per bar and a four bar section if we have one chord per bar, right? So again, we're always thinking in multiples of four when it comes to songwriting. Today's week's approach is a chords first approach. So last week we talked about how when you have a, or when you already have a melody in place, you can find out the chords for that melody. This uh, month we're going to talk about how to find chords first so you can then later figure out a melody to sing on top of that. So here's what you're trying to achieve basically. You have four chords and four bars, okay? Now the first step to find those four chords is to figure out which key you're in. Now last month's video might actually help with that a little bit. If you have a couple of notes that you like, uh, you can just kind of go along the scales to figure out what those seven notes are. But if you're a beginner at uh, writing songs, I would highly suggest sticking only to the white keys on your keyboard, okay? That's C major or the C Ionian system. Like there's a couple of keys, a couple of scales hidden in here, but C major being the most popular or A minor really is the other one that's really popular, okay? So C major, A minor, those are the most important keys you're getting if you're just playing those white keys. And if you stay on those white keys, pretty much anything you play cannot really sound wrong. Unless you, you start playing black keys, anything you play will kind of make sense harmonically. Now one more thing on choosing the key that you're in. If you already know what C major is and you want to start exploring other keys, that's fine because the functions are the same. Once you know how to use one key really well, it, it's not going to be all too difficult to transfer that skill to another key because the relationships are always the same. So functionally, the keys all work the same. Once you know how C major work, it's not going to be too difficult to switch to F major and figure out how that key works. It's exactly the same, just the moves, the chords are moved somewhere else. Now functionally, yes, all of those keys are going to be the same, but that's usually where music theory stops. It just tells us like, well, it doesn't really matter which key you choose. They're all functionally equal. And I don't think that's quite true. There's a couple of considerations you should make when choosing your key. Again, if you're a beginner, just stick with the white keys. But if you already passed that, here's a couple of considerations for you. Number one is deciding which instruments you're going to be writing for. If you're writing for guitar, for example, great guitar keys are E, A, and D. If you're, if you're playing in a, in a rock band, maybe C or A or B might also be great keys. That's something to ask your guitarist, okay? If you're uh, playing in a brass band, B flat and E flat or F are great keys because those work really well on those instruments. Um, again, if you're writing for piano or string sections, I would say just sticking to something that has few accidentals is probably best. There is another consideration on top of that to make though. It's not just which instruments you're writing for, but it's also where they sound their best, okay? So, uh, and this is specifically talking about vocals here. Now, let's say I have a song that I wrote in a pretty low key. If I'm singing that, I'm gonna sound very, very relaxed, but maybe also a little bit bored, right? If, I, if it's too low for my, for, my, for my voice, it's not gonna sound great. So if I move that up by like a, a third maybe, so a couple of steps on the piano, move it to a higher key, that's going to give me my voice a little bit more strain. I have to put a little bit more effort into performing that melody. And that might be exactly what my song needs emotionally. Also, and this is, I think, quite important for songwriters. If you only ever write songs in C major and you, you, know, you write your melodies by improvising lines over those chords, you're only going to end up with melodies in a certain range. And that only gives you a certain relation to your bass notes, meaning you're emotionally also limiting yourself 
by the key that you're choosing. So for example, if you're singing over a chord progression in F major, even if you sing the same notes, it's gonna sound different because the relationship to the chords underneath are different than if you sang that same melody over a chord progression in C major. And so that opens up new doors for you and gives you more emotions to explore. Um, so that's why for songwriters, it does make sense to eventually spread out and try out other chord progressions just to feel, uh, to feel out different ways for your vocals to sing melodies over those chord progressions, okay? So that's just a quick side note. Uh, and I realized that was a very long first point. So number one is figuring out the key that you're in. Again, stick to the white keys if you're a beginner. So step number two is figuring out your bass notes. This is really, really quite simple. You almost cannot do anything wrong. Find a note for every bar and find that note in the lower register of your instrument, okay? So the only thing you might be able to do wrong here is don't try to play a melody here, but just try to play one note per bar and keep that, stick to the, the lower register of your instrument. That's really all you need to do. Um, so these notes don't have to be next to each other. You can jump around. That's actually a really good thing for bass if the bass jumps around a little bit. So don't try to, to write something that is like proper voice leading or something like that. Don't get carried away with that. You can write pretty much anything. Just select four notes on your keyboard. That will be your bass notes for your song. And then number, step number three would be filling in the notes for those bass notes. I've already talked about that in last month's video in the first part of this series. I'll quickly go over it again. So. Once you've found your bass note, you figure out which of those three uh, configurations you want to use. Do you want to use the 135, what's also known as the root position of the chord? Do you want to use the 146, which is the first inversion? Or do you want to use, sorry, that's the second inversion? Or do you want to use the 136, which is the first inversion? Okay, it's going to be any one of those three. And which one you pick, again, is up to you. You decide which of those you want to use. So, one more thing before we end this video is um, a little bit more esoteric, but again, I think something really, really important. If it doesn't sound right, change it. It's not difficult to write songs if you just listen to what your ears are telling you. If something doesn't work and it just feels odd, play around with it until it sounds good. Okay, that's really the whole secret to being a great songwriter. That's really all it is. And let me say one more thing. Now that you've found your four chords, playing that on your instrument might seem really quite boring. So it might sound something like... Oh, okay, there seems to be a problem with my piano, but you know what I'm trying to do here. So um, it just sounds a little bit boring, right? So the next step is to make it rhythmically a little bit more interesting. And that's by using what's called syncopation. And a really great simple pattern for you to try out with, try out at the beginning is the following. You just, every second chord, you move forward a little bit. So you play, instead of playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you would play one, two, three, four, one, two, so, and then the actual thing, if you speed it up a little bit, it will sound something like this. Hopefully without the wrong note, but that's, again, because I did a bad soldering job with this one. So, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, and uh, it will take some stress off your shoulders next time you're writing a chord progression. I'll see you again next month when we talk about voice leading. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Cheers.